We're doing this new segment. It's called Ana Gona Contigo, and that means Ana, take me with you. <laughs> so I have to tell you this. Open air market, can have different food, different drinks, um, and In the heart of Northeast Ohio, things are a bit different here. Texas Longhorns grazing amongst a 110 acre farm that produces orchids. Green Circle growers have been planted here for more than 50 years. Good morning, buenos dias. We are in Oberlin, Ohio and these flowers normally grow in the tropics like Puerto Rico, Cuba, Central America but they're being grown here in February and Hayden here from Green Circle Growers is here to tell us all about it. Yeah. Who tra who's, who's, whose brainchild is this? Yeah, so um, this is, you know, the company is all family owned. Um, the Van Wengerden family um, passed it down, you know, they're in their second generation. It's been here for 50 years. They're breathtaking. Yeah, they really are. Um, what we have here are some of our watercolor orchids, which, you know, uh, the blue watercolor is personally a favorite of mine. Mm -hmm. um, so what we do to create these vibrant colors is we uh, have a natural water-based dye that um, we make a small insertion um, into the plant and as they grow the water goes up into them um, and you know it gives you this wonderful color um, but because it is water-based uh, once this first bloom goes away and then the next bloom comes they actually go back to a natural color because the water just passes through the plant. Oh my goodness so you have them here for how long before you distribute them across the country? Uh, we'll have our plants for probably about a year mm -hmm. um, so the goal of growing them and distributing them is to be able to distribute them with just a few buds left to bloom so by the time they are coming to the stores they either are just you know full bloom or they're just about to be full bloom that way you can really enjoy that two to three or even four months in some cases of beautiful vibrant color before um, it goes dormant once again and is ready to bloom and you know next next uh, time around so we're here with Frank he's a grower manager and he's originally from Netherlands, from the Netherlands, right? You've been right. here for about ten years. Yep. So the um, the seasons are kind of like Ohio, but um, just just not as extreme. extreme. The Netherlands has a sea climate, uh -huh. uh, so the sea helps to um, you know uh, mellow out the, the summers and winters a little bit. So we get some snow, we get some warmer temperatures. But it's not the big swings like you have here, and, and you know the, the, the snow accumulation. So. The cold, of February. Right. right yeah. Alrighty. So tell us about the seedlings. Uh, so yeah, these are um, they're actually tissue culture plants. Uh -huh. So um, they're, they're not grown from seeds. Uh, they're um, no. They're little clones. Really. really? Um, and basically, all the plants in in in. This cup, they're the exact same variety, the exact same color. Uh -huh. Originally, all these plants came off of one mother plant. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, through breeding, we come up with new colors, new shapes. And um, when a seedling looks promising, mm -hmm. that seedling is being cloned into multiple identical copies of the exact same seedling they originate from. Wow. Um, and so that's why yeah, these plants are all exactly same color, same characteristics. What's that's, that process? Like how do you get the different colors? Um, that's, that's quite a that's quite story a scientific. to explain. <laughs> okay. yeah. no, right. and, and so we, we actually work with breeders all over the world to uh, get their best genetics that uh -huh. work for our production setup like we're a commercial producer we're not we're not doing any of the breeding ourselves gotcha um, but um, the varieties that we like that fit our uh, production setup mm -hmm. we bring those to a lab and they uh, multiply them for us mm -hmm. and uh, they take care of this whole process for us. So by the time we, we receive this, this little box here, these plants are already six months old. 
All right, we're jamming here yeah. in the planning facility. So Hayden, um, so these, this is the beginning of the orchid process, yeah. right? Yep. So it starts with seeds. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so we have our incubation center um, that we already have gone through. We took a peek at. And so after they you know, kind of come up and you can see the leaves coming through, um, they get brought in here uh, to be potted into soil. Okay. Um, so we have several different grading systems to make sure that all these plants you know, are facing the same direction, that they're at the proper angle. That way every single plant can get the exact amount of light in the exact places that it needs to get it. Wow. Um, that's how we can create a consistent product. Um, they grow at the, at the same pace um, and we can control a lot of the different elements of the plants. It's interesting because you have all these machines back here, but they have to manually put them in the pot yeah, yeah. Um, you know, obviously we try and be as efficient um, both with our time and with our resources. Um, but, you know, there, there's certain things that, you know, just you got to do manually. Hi, I'm Jamie Brankus. You may remember me as the guy who invented 8-Minute Abs. A concept that unleashed an explosion of time-sensitive solutions to help you and countless others achieve your fitness goals in a very busy world. Starting now, I'm joining forces with Evergreen Wellness. That's right, this time I'm here to put the boom back in the baby boomers. Now I'm proud to be part of Evergreen Wellness, and now you can be too. I mean, what you do is very interesting it's actually. Yes, it's fascinating. It's fascinating. Tell us about that. Okay, so I, um, well, first of all, I want to thank you oh, you're for inviting me you're to your show and giving me the opportunity mm -hmm. to talk to the audience mm -hmm. uh, about what I do in the office and what I do, what do I do outside as well. <laughs> but um, I, at the risk of sounding very corny, I consider myself a career prosecutor. Uh, and I believe that as a prosecutor, uh, my job is to seek justice. Uh, so I know that I have a duty to thoroughly prepare my cases and pursue convictions against those that committed the crimes but that doesn't end there. My responsibility doesn't end there. Because in some circumstances where new and credible evidence comes to light suggesting that the person did not commit the crime, uh, we have a duty to open an investigation. Uh, because none of us wants to um, convict an innocent person. And what we do is once we receive that, if there is a likelihood that a claim of innocence, a valid claim of innocence is present, uh, I would either assign a prosecutor or I would assign myself to look uh, into the case. And we would, if we need to use investigators, and we will look into all the evidence, uh, the case, the transcript, and at the end, we will decide whether this is a valid claim and make a recommendation to the county prosecutor, Mr. Michael Malley. All right, so you're so my husband said you were like a, he called you like a Clark Kent. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> okay. You know what I mean? So you're like this is what you do, but then you have this tremendous, very neat hobby that a lot, that a lot of people don't do this hobby. So tell That's us true. about it. So. That's true. Well, I've. In my own private life, I combine my love for history and riding horses. I've been riding horses since I was a kid. Mm -hmm. So what I've done is um, I started recreating history, uh, historic events in the late 1990s. And um, in 2004, I was in a, in a an, sorry, I was in an event in Spain and while uh, that event was happening, uh, cannons were going off and r horses were galloping all over. I was thinking about Puerto Rico. I grew up, I was born and grew up in Puerto Rico, and I was thinking about the castles in San Juan, that we needed to do this over there. So after coming back from Spain, I started reaching out to people that liked history as much as I do. Puerto Rican history. And I met a few friends from Baltimore, from San Germán, Puerto Rico, uh, Virginia, Florida, and we all decided to uh, go to San Juan, meet there, and see what we could do. Ultimately, we created, we recreated a group, 
a, a regiment that existed in Puerto Rico in the 1790s invaded. Mm -hmm. um, their goal was to take Puerto Rico away from Spain, and the majority of the soldiers that fought against them were from the island, were from Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the people in the island do not know that. Mm -hmm. So our goal was to not only give life to history in Puerto Rico, because you have beautiful fortifications, castles, and emplacements for cannons, and the governor's mansion, which is 400 years old, but those are just buildings. We wanted to give it life, and we did. Uh, since 2005, we created this group that is still growing, and we do events throughout the year in Puerto Rico, in uh -huh. San Juan. They let us play with El San Juan. Uh, we have cannons and horses and, and muskets and black powder, and sometimes we stay in the castles and sleep there. Uh -huh. uh, we do ceremonies and events in the Morro or the San Cristobal. Mm -hmm. And in fact, um, the next one is going to be in April, at the end of April. Hi, this is Matt Galini with Mentor iPhone Repair. We fix iPhones, iPads, and iPods. Most repairs are done in 15 minutes or less. If you're looking for a case for your brand new iPhone 7 or 7 Plus, we have plenty to choose from. We also have pre-owned devices at a great price. We can protect any iPhone model you have, even with the 5s and the 6s and the 6 Pluses. Need to get a grip? How about a pop socket? We also have a variety of iPad cases as well. I'm Matt Galini. Come and see my new store across from Great Lakes Mall. We go now to Cleveland, to La Villa Hispana, the heart of the Hispanic community. The Hispanic Business Center has teamed up with area organizations and sponsors to hold a comprehensive entrepreneur training for business owners that want to be part of an indoor year-round plaza located in the area of West 25th and Clark. The Mercado, the indoor market, will break ground in the summer of 2019. We are at Klopp Investment with the CEO, John Klopp, and we're talking uh, 401ks. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you. It's glad to be here. All righty. So with 401ks, let's talk a little bit about that, some of the rules about taking the money out. Sure thing. Uh, 401k is meant for your retirement uh, as you're working at a, your present company. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times uh, people may change jobs and then they have to convert or roll over that 401k plan into a uh, current uh, account, which would equate to a I IRA rollover. So we help people do that um, to keep their investments current and uh, uh, to manage them properly in today's marketplace. All right, so this morning we're going to take some phone calls. Excellent, um, good if idea. If anybody has any questions about 401ks or any strategies, so here we go our first caller. Hello, hola. Hola, hello. I have a question. Yes. Yes, welcome. Um, yes, welcome to the Anna Show. <laughs> all right. <laughs> yes, all right. I had a question. Um, how do I roll over my all for 1K plan to an investment account? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, a lot of people fall into that category where um, they have an old 401k plan from a previous employer that they've kind of ignored and hasn't really uh, watched that uh, uh, account very closely. So we have assisted a lot of clients over the years on rolling that over into a, an existing IRA rollover. And uh, Klopp Investment will manage that account for you in a prudent manner in the stock market and uh, we are looking for good results on a yearly and three, five, and 10 year basis. Uh, we send the paperwork out to you, you fill out the appropriate forms, and it normally takes one to two weeks to transfer those assets in full from your previous uh, brokerage account into such firms as Fidelity Investments and uh, Charles Schwab or TD Ameritrade. Those are our main custodians for our clients. Does that answer? Wow, sounds good. That's very easy. <laughs> yeah, it is pretty easy. That's you know, very, yeah, that's very easy to do. And yeah. um, again, it should take uh, no more than two weeks from start to finish. Well, excellent, excellent. Thank you so much. You thank too. You. Right, thank thank you. you. Have a good day. Uh, when you sign your 401k of 2000, 
or longer you put a white K, uh, I need to know how much does it cost. Uh, oh, oh, the cost. Dinero. Sure, the dinero. Everybody wants to know about the dinero. Mucho dinero, por qué? <laughs> but uh, <laughs> actually, it's fairly cost effective because the paperwork process, uh, there is no cost to transfer the assets and to do the, the paperwork process, say from your old company into a firm like Fidelity Investments. Once we establish the account, there is a management fee to uh, operate and manage your account on a yearly basis. And that's approximately 1% a year. Ah, bueno, well, no, mi nombre es Janet, Janet García. Ok. Sí. Eh, vivo en Cleveland. Ajá. Uh -huh. Y bueno, tengo una preguntita para John. Ok. Um, sí. Hola. Hi. Hi, John. How are you doing? Oh, fantastic. Yourself? Yeah. Today? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I have a question for you, John. Sure. Uh, my question is, uh, could you please talk about some of the risks in the uh, stock market? Uh, sure thing. Yes, the, uh, the stock market does have risk. As we've noticed in the last few weeks, it's been a bit volatile, up and down. So our advice here at Klopp Investment is to build a, a prudent portfolio of good, solid companies in many respective industries so that if certain industries are out of favor, other industries will improve or do well for you. So uh, again, a prudent strategy of being well diversified will help you um, overcome any short-term volatility and individual risk in the stock market. So if someone wants to contact you, how do they get a hold of you? Oh, sure. We're in downtown Cleveland, and our phone number at Klopp Investment is 216-566-1100. Hi, my name is Amparo Vega. I'm the owner and founder of Original Cleveland Watch Company. If you're a nonprofit or a high school looking for a unique way to fundraise, I can make you lots of money. Give me a call. The time is right to earn hundreds, even thousands of dollars for your fundraiser and show your school spirit. You can make up to $12 profit per watch and showcase your business or non for profit. Call now, Original Cleveland Watch Company at 216 905 3715. Buenos dias. Today we're going to show you how to make Mexican enchiladas with red sauce. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. It's lovely. Elvia is going to show us how to how to make it. Good morning. Good morning. So it looks so good. So is this from scratch, the, the sauce? The yes. Sauce? Okay. Yes, it is. All right. How many times do you think you've made enchiladas in your life? ¿Cuántas veces oh, tienes que hecho enchiladas? Many times. ¿Cómo cuántas veces? Uh, Miles? Yeah, not thousands. Hundreds of hundreds, times. Okay. Hundreds of times. Alrighty. And I love it because it's a pretty meal. Está bonita, ¿verdad? Se ve bonita. En el plato. Sí. Okay. Yes. So, entonces, este es, um, estos son los peppers? So, como... Estos son los ingredientes que vamos a usar. Uh -huh. Estos son chiles guajillos. Uh -huh. Aproximadamente ocho chiles guajillos. Un okay. chile ancho. Okay. Tortillas de maíz. Uh -huh. Queso, mm -hmm. queso mm -hmm. mexicano, or it could be queso mexicano or, or mozzarella, mozzarella cheese, cheese. Mm -hmm. un ajo, mm -hmm. eh, aproximadamente dos cucharaditas de harina, okay. y esos son los ingredientes que, right, que so se necesitan. So this is like um, two tablespoons of flour, maybe. Como un poquito más. Como tres. Tres, tres yeah. of flour. Uh, three. So where do you get this chile? ¿Dónde lo encuentran? At the Mexican supermarket. At the Mexican supermarket. Okay, and then what is it called when, they, when people ask for it? The name of the supermarket? N or uh, no, the name of the chile. So they're all, they're, it's all the same kind of chile? No. It's different chile. This is, this is guaji guajillo. Guajillo. And this is ancho. Okay. I'm just using just one for... Mm -hmm. um, so estos son guajillo? Uh-huh. Are they real spicy? A little bit. A little bit? Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so they can put as much as or little. Maybe si no le gusta mucho el spicy, le ponen menos. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you don't like spiky, spicy, you can put less in there. Okay. So entonces, ¿qué hacemos? So what's next? Oh, uh, lo primero que hacen es uh, lavar los chiles. The first thing we do is wash the chiles. Okay. 
Después pon, los ponen a remojar en agua caliente aproximadamente tres minutos. So you soak them in water for three mm -hmm. minutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you soak them in water for three minutes. Okay, mm -hmm. got it. Okay. One clove of garlic. Y los ponen... Lo vamos a moler como por dos minutos okay. hasta que eh, ya esté la salsa suave. <laughs> que no haya no haya este grumos no haya este que esté que esté bien uh, got it uh -huh. so you blend it until it's almost like saucy right mm -hmm. so you don't take any of the seeds out or anything me la te solo echa completo you don't take the seeds out you can do it if you don't want you, it uh -huh. too But, spicy mm -hmm. you can take, take the, the seeds, seeds out because the seeds is what makes it spicy right <laughs> yes <laughs> okay yeah una cucharadita de aceite Teaspoon of olive oil. Uh huh. The corn oil. Corn oil. Uh, yeah. Y, um, so is that really spicy? Because I'd be afraid to try it. Esta, eso está bien picante. Sí. <laughs> okay. Y um, pones a cocinar la salsa mm -hmm. por aproximadamente. Uh, empezamos a mover rápidamente. Mm -hmm. Después de esto. Lo que hacemos es um, movemos, seguimos, seguimos moviendo it, yeah. uh -huh. y ponemos la harina, la ponemos en, el, en la licuadora, uh -huh. le agregamos And that was about three tablespoons, de la sí. agua, 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 uh -huh. okay. y le agregamos. Y seguimos moviendo rápido. Uh -huh. uh, podemos bajar un poco. Okay. Seguimos moviendo rápido. So what, ha so what happens like if you eat something like a pepper and it's too hot because it's happened to me a couple times? What should, what's the best way to, you know, to take that, that hot? What do you feel like? People say drink milk. Drink milk. Or eat bread. Or eat bread. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> La salsa está un poquito espesa, solo vamos a agregar un poquito de okay. un poquito de agua. Un poquito más. Ya. Yeah. Aproximadamente uh, un minuto o dos minutos. Okay. Maybe two minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Estoy tratando de usarla. Qué color tan bonito también. Qué pretty red. Uh -huh. Pueden um, rellenarlas con queso, con vegetales, lo mm -hmm. que deseen. Mi hija es um, vegan. Mm -hmm. so, Las puede, pueden rellenar este con um, vegetales, papas y zanahorias. Okay. Mm -hmm. But she says it's not just cheese. You can put chicken, mm -hmm. vegan, mm -hmm. she'll, she'll put... Uh, vegetables mm -hmm. in there, right? See. Sí. We're gonna have Elvia join me too. She can enjoy her her creation. It's so good. Sadikisimo. Uh, gracias. Uh, thank you so much for um, oh. for sharing the recipe. Anytime. Elizabeth Image Unisex Salon, where looking good is understood. Cleveland's first Hispanic female barber entrepreneur, and she does my hair every week. Her team does hair, updos, eyebrows, pedicures, and will do your makeup for that special occasion. Elizabeth Image Unisex Salon, located at 4355 Ridge Road in Brooklyn, Ohio. You can contact her and her staff at 216-961-4441, elizabethimage.com. Mouth-watering delicious food minus the gluten. Gluten-free and the meals taste great. Moist and tasty chocolate cupcakes, mouth-watering thinner pan pizza, soft and chewy chocolate chip cookies that melt in your mouth, light and fluffy pancakes, crispy flaky pie crust, all gluten-free. Catherine spent years perfecting her recipes. Buy her gluten-free mixes online. Go to MinusG.com now. Hola, buenos dias. If you're just joining us, we are in Oberlin, Ohio. And so look at all these beautiful, breathtaking orchids. They're actually growing tropical orchids in Northeast Ohio in February. 
I mean, it, the, you, you usually see the, these in places like Puerto Rico, um, South America, right? Yeah. Hayden from yeah. um, Hawaii is another really big one. Um, tropical climates to where they get some shade um, and they grow on trees. So, oh yeah. my goodness. So whose brainchild was this? Yeah, so this is the uh, Van Wingerden family. Um, <laughs> so about 50 years ago, 1968, uh, they actually started as a vegetable farm. Uh -huh. um, and as things kind of grew, um, they got more into different types of plants. Um, and this is just such a high demand plant. People They're love so their beautiful. orchids. Um, and it's just been growing ever since. This feels like heaven. Yeah, no, it's, this is my favorite um, place to visit in the greenhouse. Um, when you ever having a bad day, you can just step out here and I mean all the color, <laughs> the warmth, it just really picks you up. Yeah, so it's, it, what is it, 85 degrees in here? Um, yeah, probably around uh, lower 80s, 83 uh -huh. on average. Uh -huh. um, but yeah, I mean, and just the, you know, the, the right amount of humidity. So when you get the, uh, you know, you've done the two or three months of blooming and then you want it to rebloom, how far do you cut down? Is it where you see green? Because I haven't cut mine at all. Mine's, yeah. I just cut it up here. So it should be more down here, no, probably, um, right? Actually, it's no? no just below the flowering. Which um, is right here? Uh, it'd actually be right here. Okay. Yep. Alrighty. Yep. Awesome. So wait, I actually have um, older friends mm -hmm. that they actually talk to their plants. Have you ever heard anything like that? <laughs> um, you know, everyone has their, their, own, <laughs> little, their own little uh, uh, relationship with their plant. You know, and they really do become a part of your family, a part of your home. Um, so, you know what, I, I don't think that's too, I don't think it's and, too And too off. she had orchids and she had all kinds of different plants in the middle of winter. Yeah. So, she's, I said, how do, you, how do you get them? And she's like, well, you know, I take care of them, but I talk to them. Yes. And it's just so sweet. All right, and so we also want to tell the men out there that women do like flowers year oh, round. I'm sure there's a lot of... Um, smart men out there that know that, but just as a reminder, right? I mean, yeah. You have a girlfriend, oh, right? And course. she probably loves that you work here. She she loves it. I can come home, you know, any any day. I can I can bring an, bring an orchid home, and mm -hmm. uh, she she it's just beautiful. Um, she loves it. Uh, she never owned an orchid, an orchid before, mm -hmm. um, but after having one, you know, it's just it's just an extra special part of your life um, to bring something that can grow with you, mm -hmm. um, something that's just so beautiful and um, not to mention healthy. Mm -hmm. Having plants, you know, it, it's, it, therapeutic. It's, the, it's the therapeutic, it's the clean air, um, it's just all around fantastic. Now, um, orchids are, these orchids are um, non-scented, uh -huh. so that's uh, another interesting part, is you can bring it into your home and let's say, you know, you have someone who's sensitive to certain um, smells or, you know, you don't want to, you know, have a certain scent, yeah, uh, so you don't have to like worry that. about that. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so for the Spanish phrase of the day, we're here with the orchids. Um, we're going to say orchid in Spanish, so that would be orquídea. So one orchid would be la orquídea, and then more than one orchid would be las orquídeas. So when you go to Puerto Rico, Hawaii, South America, when the women are dressed in their traditional dress, they will wear a pretty orchid in their hair. So all of you have a great day, everybody. Vaya con Dios.